It's Thursday, and that means that it is another episode of Thursdays with Tolka. Tolka is a certified SSPC protective coding specialist, codings inspector, and a professional instructor. Today's topic is five types of thermal spray coating processes. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and share this video. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please make sure to subscribe and set your notifications to all so that you won't miss any new content. Welcome to another episode of Thursdays with Tolga. I'm Jim Kunkel. Joining me today is Tolga Daraz, Protective Coding Specialist. Welcome, Tolga. Welcome, James. Hey, Tolga, what are we going to be talking about today? Today, we are, we are going to be talking about thermal spray applications and coatings, James. But since it's very co comprehensive, detailed, we will be focusing on five main types. Perfect, perfect. Hey, Tolga, I wanted to let you know our last episode that we did regarding the multi-code versus single-code mm -hmm. systems, we had a very good amount of feedback, and everyone really appreciated you going through everything and also talking about the advantages and also, to the disadvantages of either type of system, and also to how they are applied out in the field. It was really great information, and I truly appreciate uh, you providing that last week. And I know this week regarding thermal spray, this is going to be a really good received episode as well. So, hey, Tolga, let me start off by asking you, there are a lot of the viewers that are going to be watching this episode. They have maybe no or very little knowledge about thermal spray coatings and, and also thermal spray application. Could you provide a basic overview of what thermal spray coatings are? Yeah, James, uh, actually thermal spray is uh, quite an uh, interesting subject. It's an engineering, it's an interdisciplinary engineering subject. Uh, we can say for our viewers, uh, who might know a little or nothing at all about thermal spray, that thermal spray application is an industrial coating process in which thermal spray coatings are melted or heated and then sprayed onto a surface, as we see here, and in pinch, with the high velocity, we will go, we will uh, talk about this high velocity, what it means, and then then solidify this liquid molten metals or other mat materials, but, but ma ma materials we will also be talking about. This, so, uh, this material, thermal spray coating materials, so solidify to make a split of layers. So finally, we can say this is a new layer because th this is a new surface, not a old surface. So we can say that th by thermal spray, we are modifying in some way, the subsurface. And thermal spray is basically a system. What I mean by system, because it has a uh, complex uh, nature. I mean, it's an engineering subject, as I told you, James. And it has some items in all technologies that we will be ta talking about in this episode. So firstly, the, the system overview, the, the system has a spray torch or spray gun. There is a feeder. There is a feeder that supplying the powder or wire or liquid that we will be talking about, the torch. The media supply that is the manipulating the torch or substrate to be coated. And the power supply and often stand a lot. And sometimes it can be robotic or manual. We will come to that point later. And the control console. Since it's an engineering, it has a control console, this system. So what, what we can say from here, here is this, this is a really completely different system coating, it's unlike of any other protective coatings. So we can say the thermal spray is a um, ocean of coatings, as we will go through. So what we can say is uh, understanding the microstructure, because have you ever eaten a pancake, James, Jim? 
I love pancakes with a lot of syrup. So, <laughs> the, uh, the mat thermal spray, in general, it can, we can analo uh, we can in an analogy um, make a similarity between the pancake and the uh, this substrate and this uh, surface and the coating, because as you can see, we will go through this in a bit. bit. This is. Uh, because of the melting process, which we will be talking about in the, the different technologies later on this episode, there is uh, this coating is formed by layers, or we call it splats, and this is like a pancake. There are some unmelted materials or melted materials, but this is not a pure paint or a coating. This thermal spray is a much more complex than a paint or a coating, we, as we all know. So it can be as low as 20 microns or it can be as much as, as high as two, 3,000 microns, 3 millimeters. So as I, as I tell you, Jim, this is not a, a toy. This is it's a real engineering subject. See, uh, so, uh, but there are some also... Uh, differences between pr protective coatings and especially the chemical coatings since this is a totally uh, uh, mechanical uh, uh, spray there is no chemical bonding so there is no thermal if, when we are saying thermal spray you should understand that there is no chemical bonding therefore as we will go through surface preparation is quite important and the inspection is also quite important Impo more important than the surface pre pre uh, normal paints and coatings. So the addition is basically by hooking, chemical, mechanical hooking, not a chemical, but mechanical hooking. So what are the chem uh, materials? Let, uh, let me go uh, fastly, because a lot of subjects we will be talking about. There are pure metals like zinc, Aluminium, copper, uh, steel, iron, molybdenum, titanium. These are these can be melted and uh, sprayed. Uh, alloys of pure metals like aluminium, zinc, nickel alloys, or uh, or chromium uh, alloys. So these are mostly used in uh, corrosion protection. We will see in a minute. There are ceramics. What I mean by ceramics, there are metal oxides like aluminum oxides, alumina, or titanium oxides, or uh, zirconium oxides, chromium oxides. There are carbides. Uh, these are special, very special engineering products that are not uh, that cannot be sprayed with uh, some kind of thermal spray application. We will go into that. Uh, and tungsten carbide. Uh, chromium carbide, nickel carbide. So, uh, even plastics, James, mm -hmm. can be sprayed, like polyethylene, polypropylene, just you name it. And they are, they can be in, most of the time in metals, they can be in wire form, or uh, like in ceramics or carbides, they can be in, uh, in powder form. Okay. And the substrates, uh, J this is very interesting, because Normally, we know that most of the people in our product industry so know that it's, it's, it's about thermal sprays about metals, but it's not true. At least it is true, but not completely true. You can apply thermal spray coatings to ceramics. You can apply thermal spray to polymers. Or you can apply to even glasses. You can apply glasses or composites like like fiber, uh, fiber uh, glasses, and even paper. But there are some prerequisites. What are the prerequisites? All of the materials, all of the substances should have a line of sight, line of uh, sight access to the spray stream. So it's, it is a line of sight. It's a, also, it's a, it's a disadvantage. We will also see that. So all these materials should be cleaned and should be, should be able to textured for adherence and then not be graded because there is tremendous amount of heat and stress, uh, James. 
And okay, these are all the substrates we will be talking about and coating. And these are the these are coating materials. Okay. We will we will uh, later uh, talk about this. But let's talk let's talk about what are the functions? What is useful? Why why are we using this? We are using first, believe it or not, it's like an um, it's like welding. So it's it can be used for restoring. It can be used for protecting, as in metallizing, or it can be used for improving. What I mean by these three words, okay? Corrosion protection to protect. As, as the name uh, suggests, single layer, as we talk in the in our previous layer, maybe you can take a, give a link on this our previous episode. Single layer uh, thermal spray coatings or metallizing co coatings are very popular in nowadays because of their high performance. Or multiple layer with sealer and top coat, we will come to the sealer issue later on. And then wear protection. And not, um, in addition to norm, uh, conventional paints and coatings, this has an enormous amount of scuffing and fretting corrosion protection, like we, they call it a, a tribology. The thermal spray guys call it this tribology. And also thermal insulation, because since these are all uh, high temperature materials melted, they, are can, they can be used for thermal barrier coatings for various industries. We will come to what industries later on. And, and for, yes, uh, in history, believe it or not, the his, in historical uh, development of thermal spray, renovation and repairing is the first purpose of this thermal spray by adding material or onto worn locations or reconstitu reconstituting a part which has been rejected due to faulty material or incorrect machining. And we can give surfaces special purposes like in electrical insulating or conducting, electromagnetic shielding, self-lubricating coatings, decorative, slip critical, we will come to that point in a minute also, highly absorptive or reflective coatings, and so on. And firstly, we we'll talk about what we mean by this restoration or renovation. In the old days and in nowadays, all the materials used in like, for example, hydro dams. Uh, see, this is a hydraulic turbine, uh, uh, hydraulic turbine, um, let's say, what is this called? Pelton turbine, it's called Pelton turbine. And in a Pelton turbine, it's a hydro, in a hydrodram, you uh, takes the kinetic energy of high pressure water jetting into mechanical energy. But the turbines uh, are still, uh, they are getting weird. But with the use of chrome plating, with thermal spray, this nozzles and the nozzles and all the other materials in hydrodam can be repaired, re renovated. So like, this is a worn uh, needle, turbine, turbine no nozzle needle, this is. And this is a nozzle needle with, with a chrome oxide coating. See? Yes. And let me open a parenthesis, Jim, because in, a, in our corrosion control business, metallizing is quite important, as we talked about in our uh, previous session, previous uh, episode. What I mean by metallizing, it's metal spraying, like uh, melting the metals. Like this, uh, in, in literature it's called thermal spray metallizing or TSM, in short we say metallizing. We are using mostly two materials, two metals, zinc or aluminum, and sometimes alloys of this in different ratios. Why? Because aluminum and zinc are more anodic than carbon steel and can be used for catalytic protection of carbon steel. So it can be single layer in a single coarse coatings or multi-layer for multi-functionality. 
So it can be used for steel or concrete substrates mm. to improve the corrosion protection, uh, to improve the surface life. For they are used for mostly atmospheric services, but it can be used for immersed services also. This metallizing, and as as we as we have just uh, talked in uh, in the previous uh, slides, surface preparation is critical. What I mean by, by that, especially for remote service, uh, if there is no surface preparation or very little surface preparation, there are some uh, problems that, that uh, leads to uh, coding failures, premature coding failures, uh, actually. And, and most, most of the time, because of some issues like coding failures, sealer code is also applied because um, or metallizing, as you, as, you can, as you see in this pictures is a porous coating. So it may be sometimes beneficial, but for most of the time, for aesthetic reasons, the sealer code is recommended in projects. But uh, in, we will come to that, what is flame spray, but just for the time being, just know that for metallizing two technologies, flame spray or arc spray is used. And service life, comparable or better than conventional three core systems as we have just mentioned before. Uh, we, and uh, we, I will also share with you this uh, link of this Federal Highway uh, Agency study and KTA paper uh, that uh, people, our audiences can take and look at it. And the sealeries, okay, let, let me talk about the sealeries just, just, just briefly. Uh, it's a coating, it's a paint, but it's, it's, it's a system. It's a, uh, as we talk, a substrate plus surface preparation plus thermal, thermal spray coating plus sealer coating. Normally, it's it's 20, 25 microns, most up, but up to 40 microns. So it cannot be measured very helpful because it's for porous. Uh, ultrasonic gauges or electromagnetic gauges uh, cannot uh, measure the thickness very healthily. The reason we are using sealers on top of thermal sprays is porous, the smooth appearance. And sometimes the project requires color coding because thermal spray is, is the metal, is, a, is the most of the time green in shades of green to gray. And, and most of, uh, as I told you, it is not the thermal spray, it's not very um, the resistance acids or alkaline. So because of this, for very strong acids and for very uh, strong alkalines, this, a sealer coat might be needed for also frequent wetting and splashing zones in offshore uh, industry. Also, the spray uh, sealers are also recommended. What are the sealers, for example, the chemistry is epoxies, silicones, moisture curatines, 2K, 2K polyurethanes. They are mostly for, but uh, you see, may, you, we have talked about in our the previous you know episode, Jim. But the epoxy silicones are mostly in a high viscosity, so we need to thin it to lower the viscosity. So it's a thing of a normal paints like 100 microns or 200 microns. It's very very thin. So top coat layer can be applied if required, but be careful. Coating premature. Premature failure can occur if not properly applied. So there are some set of rules for applying sealer also, but we will not go into the detail of that. It's a, it's a, uh, also a topic of another uh, maybe episode. So there are thermal spray pro, uh, in uh, organizations, professional organizations in the world. Let, let me see, International Thermal Spray pro, uh, Association. The, as uh, the American Society of Materials Thermal Spray Society. And there is a committee also there, C2 committee. And there is NETCAP, National in United States, National Euro uh, Aerospace and Defense Contract Aggregation. They have also very uh, dealing with thermal spray. We will come to that point in the, we will come to that point in the uh, qualification section of our uh, presentation, Jim. And there in Europe, in Europe, there is an also thermal spray association called European Thermal Spray Association or ETCSA. And basically these are all for uh, 
it's just a just a very brief uh, thermal spray overview or thermal what the thermal spray is thermal coating is Jim. Would you like to add something else, Jim? Yeah, I, I, I appreciate you going through all that. Very thorough and very detailed. The thing with it is I did not realize the entirety of applications. I always thought thermal spray was for corrosion control, but to see that it has absolutely other type of applications. And the other thing is uh, you know, that it can be applied on many different substrates, as you said, including even things such as plastics and, and foams and things like that. So it's just amazing to see um, the breadth of the uh, and depth of the amount of uh, applications that thermal spray can uh, can be done, and then also too the different types of uh, materials that are used for thermal spray, mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously these organizations that are uh, highly involved uh, within thermal spray. Um, you know SSPC, for example, uh, and NACE International is involved in in thermal spray as well. Um, yep. With SSPC, we actually have a, a, a certification program for contractors to do. Yes, I will come to that point. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, but uh, no, I thought I thought it was pretty interesting to see that you can do it on uh, any type of substrate, and, and especially concrete. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting too. But go ahead, uh, continue on. And I guess the thing that I would say is, you know, uh, Tolga, the next question I have for you, you know, typically what industries are out there that are utilizing thermal spray coatings? James, uh, to be honest with you, uh, any, any, any industry with steel is okay for thermal spray. You can use thermal spray any industry using steel. What I mean by, by, by that, for example, our aerospace, it's, uh, I, am t I have taken it from a market uh, research. Uh, I, aerospace, automotive, healthcare, construction, energy, electronics, offshore, agriculture, or medical, printing, you name it. Just that, just enough uh, that steel, if there is steel co in construction, you can use thermal spray. In, in, in. So, but if you ask me, what is the major industries that are using? Contrary to, contrary to uh, common belief, James, uh, it's not uh, corrosion control. Aerospace is using huge amount of thermal spray, Jim, because there are, think of uh, aircrafts, Jim. The temperature and the pressure they are, ex uh, they are exper experiencing are, you know, terrific. It can be ambient, like 20, 20 it can be 400, even 1,000 in jet turbines or 2,000 degrees. So to protect aircraft components or rec repair the old ones, they are using, the, uh, the airspace professionals are using uh, the thermal spray. And the most used coatings are tungsten carbide, mostly carbides, like we say tungsten, chromium, aluminum, and there is graphite, nickel graphite, and cobalt molybdenum coatings. And the areas of use are also uh, any, anything about uh, aircrafts or air, uh, the air uh, devices or air equipment, turbine, turbine blades, flame tubes, landing gears, jet engines, actuation systems, engine crawling. So you name it. I mean, I mean because there is... Uh, in, in all of these, yeah, there may be some pro protective, chemical protective coatings, but most of the time the thermal spray is um, preferred because of the um, tremendous amount of, amount of uh, temperature and pressure needed for to resistance. And then the automotive. Uh, nowadays, electric cars are coming and also the uh, fuel fossils, but no matter what the technology, automotive, we are using a, a cars and we will be using cars. And, but if, when we are saying uh, automotive, we, but we are, what we understand, there is high heat, like in the uh, combustion um, fuel, in fuel injection systems, high pressure, high operation. And examples are engine parts, cylinders, liners, turbochargers, suspension parts, brake disc, exhaust pipes, and hardcore, you know, the list can go on and go. 
And the and the other one of the promising and growing uh, industries healthcare, like they provide the electric insulation. Unlike uh, corrosion, the healthcare needed electric insulation in medical devices, electronic in hospitals. They needed in electrical uh, insulation, electromagnetic shielding, biocompatible. Uh, uh, materials like uh, able to interact with bone tissues and assist in promoting bone growth. Major application areas are orthopedics, the dental impl implants, over-the-counter medicines, medical devices, and biomedical implants for femoral stems, knees, elbows. So the healthcare and med medical uh, uh, professionals are using the uh, thermal spray also not like our airspace, but definitely they are using it very in high amounts. And steel manufacturing, I will just briefly go on that. Thermal steel and rolling mills, most of the rolling mills, because there is also high temperature and pressure. Any furnaces, pickling lines, hot deep galvanizing lines, they can use it. And and another field, which is a part of corrosion protection, is offshore. Why? Jim, you know that in offshores, which is very far away from the shore, there are extreme weathers like very low and very high temperatures, waves, chemical conditions like acidic conditions. And because of this, there is uh, an, an uh, accessibility issues because uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to work in offshore, you should go there and maybe stay there for three or four months or maybe years because it's not so easy to come and go there. So uh, the life expectancy of offshore uh, uh, steel st structures are way beyond uh, the onshores, like maybe twenty years, thirty years, forty years. So that's why reduce maintenance needs because they don't want to make this offshore guys, offshore professionals don't doesn't want to main, maintain or make maintenance. So what, they want to go there and paint or coat there and thermal spray because of this uh, low uh, maintenance. Uh, they they uh, probably they uh, prefer uh, because of the reduced maintenance. No drying curing and. As we talk, there is no solvent in, unlike paint or other coatings, there is no solvent. So no drying, no curing, faster curing times, metallizing, and this is called also metallizing, but you know, most of the times in uh, offshore industries, the thermal spray uh, uh, for aluminum, thermal spray for aluminum, sometimes people uh, miss, uh, Mix, mix with thermal spray applications, thermal spray aluminum uh, shortly. And oil and gas, very constant. You know, if you have, have you ever been in like, uh, oil and gas in the uh, field or oil and gas industry, Jim? I, I have. I've had the opportunity to not only be um, uh, at a, a, a um, production site, but also with oil storage and also within a refinery itself. And, and I do know there are a lot of applications regarding thermal spray coatings inside uh, oil, gas, and, and also in pipelines yeah. as well. That's right. That, therefore, uh, very expensive, as you told, uh, very expensive. This, the materials they are, they are using are quick wear and corrosive tendons because they are, uh, uh, as in, in the nature, they are producing uh, acids or alkaline. So it's very corrosive. So major, major application areas, ball and gate valves, drilling exploration equipments, rock pits, mandrels. The most used coatings like we like in offshore aluminum and zinc or uh, alloys of um, aluminum or zinc. Carbides, mostly for renovating fused nickel ore, but for wear resistance or abrasion resistance, this fused coatings. And slip critical or fain services. This is entirely different subject, but it's very popular due to some uh, uh, most, uh, due to very, common uh, problems 
the, exper uh, the steel construction is experiencing. What is slip uh, critical fame surfaces is contacting surfaces or faces of two similar or dissimilar materials placed in tight contact to form a joint. So in the bridge, for example. So in bridge, bridge professionals knows that they should, uh, they should specify minimum slip coefficient requirement, especially around bolted. See the uh, bolts, Jim? These yes. are the connections and joints and they require uh, slip coefficients, especially some uh, societies in the United States. I can remember, but do you remember the, some societies they are using slip coefficients in steel societies? Uh, definitely. Uh, steel, I think American Industry of Steel Society. The AISC and then also mm. to the SSPC was involved with a lot of that uh, as well. Yes, SSPC has, has also very good nice uh, uh, guidelines or uh, recommended practices. This rough texture provides a, a slip coefficient around the holes. So they are used not around the holes, but pipe flanges, fringes, so anything about anything be bolted or anything relies on friction between two coded, two co connected elements. So it's also specially paint, specially surface prepared, and then thermal sprayed. So in general, or let uh, as a summary, there are numerous, lots of environment. You name it, Jane. Uh, I didn't name, uh, mention nuclear, but nuclear also nuclear industry is also using thermal spray, and other electronics are also using thermal spray. And agriculture is also using, but I didn't want to go to because it's it's a whole different story. Well, I, I was just amazed to see um, some of the applications regarding medical devices. Um, you know, that's something that I I did not expect to hear uh, in your presentation. Here was that how is using medical devices and other type th uh, type of applications like that. So it's it's interesting to see um, that in any given day, we might encounter a lot of different products and, and, and also infrastructure out there we might encounter that has um, thermal spray um, applications that are used to, to either protect it uh, from a harsh environment or, or a commodity that might be very harsh, or also too just to make it so that it's safe to be inside, um, you know, a replacement part within, uh, you know, our skeletal structure or in an airplane engine that, you know, you cannot have a failure happen because it's a critical situation. So it's very yes, interesting the right. stuff that you covered. So the, um, you know, the next thing when we, we looked at the, you know, the coatings, we looked at um, the industries that would rely on them, you know, when it comes to applying these thermal spray coatings, you know, to steel, concrete, or other substrates, you know, what are the processes that are used to apply these coatings? James, um, actually, James, there are not only five. There are more, much more than five types. I can see but that. You see that chart? This is a chart I take from Handbook of Thermal Spray, American Society of Material International. So actually it started way back in 1910s, like uh, the welding guys, because thermal spray is a modification of welding, Jane, by, uh, in history. So uh, we will just going to do, we will just uh, deal with uh, five main types that are used mostly in the industry. But just make sure and just know that there are tremendous amounts of uh, different types like uh, cold sprays, like plasma jets, like uh, particle, uh, like, uh, like uh, detons, de de praxairs, so different things. So I will, we will not go into that. What, what we will go into that is first combustion, flame, second, high velocity or uh, let me say HVOF, make it a little bit uh, tricky. 
electric arc, thermal uh, plasma thermal spray application, and lastly, spray and fuse thermal spray application. So, so let's start with combustion. By the way, thermal spray coating is, you see this process is like welding, as I mentioned. Welding is a much more uh, uh, temperature uh, required uh, or process. Where are is this chemical vapor deposition and vapor deposition? They are also like brother or sisters with thermal spray, but thermal spray is a little bit different. But they have some in, uh, something in common. Just make sure. So let's start with chemical uh, combustion flame thermal spray. So it's the most basic form. It's like 19. It's uh, like a hundred years. So very mature technology most basic form of thermal spray and one of the oldest, maybe more than 100 years old, uses the combustion of fuel gas like acetylene, propylene, propane, hydrogen to, met, uh, to heat the wires or powders, materials, which will be sprayed onto the surface. And flame spray melts these materials, which, is, which can be wire or powder, in the combustion stream and applies the materials to the part. And restoration for damage, so one of the uses of restoration for damage parts, machine parts, was the first industrial application field. Then comes the corrosion control, especially for hard to reach areas like holes, flanges, like that. Can spray metals, as we are talk, like alloys and aluminum, some of the, not all, but some of the aluminum oxides and ceramics, like ceramic metals. And I will share with the temperature, be careful about the temperature, it's 3000, it will be hot, hotter, 3000 degrees or 5400 5, Fahrenheit. Spray rate is two to six kilograms. So very low, very, very low. In terms of uh, other paints and coatings, the spray is quite low. Particle velocity is up to 50 meter square, meter per square. So in Europe and in most of the world, we are using metric, but for all our ideas, we, I'm giving also the imperial, so that I know that you are both accustomed to you in metric or you understand. So the Basically, the setup is like that. The, you see this uh, two uh, cylinders, cylinders or uh, gym. These yeah. are one of propylene or acetylene or one is oxygen. And yes. there is uh, wires coming. And this is, this is the resultant coding. So when the pros, let me come to what are the advantages. The, this technology, this combustion flame is the most economical of all thermal spray and lowest in the initial investment, can be sprayed robotically. Flame spray gun is lighter and smaller than other technologies in thermal spray, by the way. It's, it can be heavier for uh, with a normal air or airless spray. The, uh, the, what are the cons? As I mentioned, the spray rate is very, very slow. It's very slow and fire and explosion risk because of this uh, oxygen and fuel gases. Not enough heat for high heat coatings. So some ceramics and some carbides cannot be sprayed with this technology. So what is HVOF? It's high velocity oxygen fuel. And it is the combustion of fuel gases combined with oxygen to produce a high velocity spray jet. Yeah, it's like a combustion flame spray, but it's different because it uses a, it uses a expansion of jet. So the, the gas coming out of this thermal spray ja, uh, gun is, is much more. So it is a super, this is, you see the diamond shock waves because of, this is because of the supersonic uh, gas uh, uh, velocity. So this, uh, this matter is injected via the, into the spray jet via argon gas or other gases with, uh, similar to argon and apply to comp component surface. See the temperature is a little bit higher than the flame spray. Spray rate is much higher and especially the particle velocity. James, Jim, the velocity of sound 
is like 340 meters square. So it is nearly double, not double, but nearly double. So it's a very, is a very, very much uh, faster than the speed of sound. So pros, let me say pros, most versatile, exact in thinner coatings, thin coatings, high particle velocities, as I mentioned, such high velocity that it produces diamond shock waves. It's a, this diamond talk shock phase is a quality uh, issue. So if you don't see the diamond shock wave waves in a things in an application, that means you are not doing co properly. Tight machine tolerances, wider selection of uh, selection materials, wider selection of uh, material than uh, the flame spray, and then the electric arc. The electric arc is. Uh, basically, it is also the welding guys are also using electric arc, electric arc welding. So very, very similar. There is a generator, there is a cable, there is two wires. The electricity is coming, and the two wires coming. One is uh, they are uh, the, these uh, wires are ne uh, negative and positive, the uh, opposite charged. So in the in just uh, in front of the just in front of this. Uh, gone. The, there is an arc forming, and the, when the arc forms, the, t uh, the application uh, uh, with the compressed air starts because this, uh, the wire melts. The two two wires starts to melt, and with the use of the comp compressed air, they are sprayed onto steel substrate. So the gas temperature is higher than flame spray. Spray rate is higher. Particle velocity is not unlike. Uh, HVOF, it's lower, but flame spray, uh, normal fl flame spray is higher. So what are the pros and what are the advantages and disadvantages? High heat and speed, arc sprays can be laid down quickly economically. I mean, it's, it's much faster than, uh, the application is much faster than flame spray. Can be sprayed robotically, so this gun can be uh, ro uh, positioned in a robotic arm, higher porosity, good for slip coat. So depending on uh, what, what is a good, what is a bad, good for slip coat uh, critical issues, but bad for aesthetics. This high porosity. What are the disadvantages? It's it's expensive, more expensive than uh, the flame spray. Higher nose, arc popping. So when it's it's not sometimes because of this uh, welding issue, because of this uh, arc issues, there are some not uh, inefficient arc issues. So it's called arc popping, electrical shock. So the operator may receive some electrical shock. So it's safety uh, risk, UV exposure. So because of this there is high amount of UA exposure. And lastly, well, the fifth one is the plasma vacuum or vacuum plasma thermal spray. What I mean by plasma? So a high heat thermal spray system that combines technical aspects of both flame and arc spray. So the material is a deposit, a typical powder, sometimes, not sometimes liquid, suspension or wire is introduced in the plasma that it is it's incredibly high temperature we will see uh, it's a there is the torch technology uses electrical arc so there is cathode and anode plus and minus sign you see there is two wires or two uh, negative and positively charged uh, powders the temperature is the or in the order of 10,000 Kelvin. So it's, see, you know, this is quite, uh, temperature is quite, you know, you cannot imagine. So even nothing can exist in 10,000 Kelvin in, in the world, you know that, Jim. The matter is melted and they are, the plasma means it's ionized. The keyword is ionized. Two main types, plasma jet uh, gener generation, plasma forming medium. I will not go into details, direct current or VSP. 
The environment is atmosphere plasma spraying, APS, or controlled atmosphere, or underwater. It can be applied underwater, this is. And there is a modified plasma spray. It's called vacuum plasma spray, which is using a partial vacuum, even at higher quality coatings, but at a higher cost. Typical thermal spray uh, sprayables are thermal spray thermal barrier coatings like chromium carbides, this uh, abradable coatings like aluminium polyester abrad abradables, ceramic coatings, chrome oxides, ceramics, and ceramics. And you see this temperature is between ten thousand or twelve twelve thousand to twenty sixteen thousand degrees, which means uh, more than two, uh, 20,000 Fahrenheit to third, nearly 30,000 Fahrenheit, Jim. So spray rate is two, two to six degrees, but particle velocity is, is about, is also a super, supersonic, you see, to 450 micro, meter per square. So what are the advantages? It's very thin, dense, and lower porosity, High temperature environment, for example, temp. So as I told you, fur systems, they, they are the fur systems capable of creating a high enough life, say, reliable, so to apply a reliable carbide coatings, you need to have a plasma spray. So other technologies can apply, but to apply it with reliably, you need to have a plasma spray. The highest main benefit of plasma spray allows for an application of ceramic coatings. Our coatings can be laid down quickly and economically, can be sprayed robotically, much, much lower porosity, so it's very, very aesthetic. And what is the cost? It's high initial cost, millions of dollars. So it's very expensive, James. And, um, uh, okay, every, every, thermal spray, uh, every thermal spray technology is uh, is very quite um, engineer uh, engineering complex, but th this is the uh, most com complex one. So you need to have a more complex, more skilled uh, person, applicator, mechanics, managerial stuff, higher nose, electrical shock, UV exposure, and there is the spray and fuse, which is a, just a modification of what is the spray and fuse. It's a two-step two thermal spray process, which means one is the application, the other one is the torch. See the James uh, torch? So unlike other thermal spray coatings, spray and fuse creates a metallurgical font. As I remember, you, you may remember James, I, I, uh, I tell you that, I told you that this is mechanical, but except for spray and fuse, spray and fuse, use a metallurgical bond because of this torch. They are using uh, sometimes different, uh, separate, but sometimes in the same uh, in the same equipment, there is a torch and there is the application. So this means surface roughness profile is important, but it may not be important as other thermal spray op operations. And this torch, this torch melts the coating material on the top layer of the component material, fusing them together. And the, metal, the, the metallurgical bond creates an extremely weird and abrasion. So this is the most weird and extremely weird and abrasion resistant coating. They, are, uh, they can perform the most extremely weird and abrasion resistant coating. And what are the pros? They can, for valves, eggers, exhaust fans, sucker pumps, they can use with high temperatures, like in welding. So it's very close to welding. This spray and fuse technology is very close to welding. Due to high heat of spray and fuse, some heat distortion. So be careful about the selection of the substrate. The weird characters of spray and fuse closely compared to those hard face valve overlaying, so in another technology. So metals used in hard facing can also be used in spray and fuse. So in hard facing welding, 
and spray fuse, they are using like self-flux alloys, self-flux alloys. So in summary, we can say that spray and fuse coatings are corrosion resistant, highly abradable, highly wear resistance coatings. But there are some uh, disadvantages, James, like not every part will be good content, very, uh, because of the temperature, you see temperature, James. So you need to be specific in selecting the substrates, the surface. It should uh, endure the sub surface temperature, like around 2000 to 2000 uh, Fahrenheit. So when you heat it, there's a, uh, there needs a slower cool cooling rates. So it is not cooled uh, one is in the flame spray. Flame spray, you just uh, you just apply it, it cools down. But in the spray and fuse, it it takes time to cool down. So care must also be taken to ensure that the coating material and the substrate are metallurgic compound. So you need to select the coating material and the substrate. So you need to understand if they are metallurgically, because there is not, this is not, not a surface uh, phenomenon. This is metallurgical. They bind together metallurgically. So, so in the end, as a, as a summary, uh, James, thermal spray is with increasing velocities and increasing temperatures, you get more performance, more lower porosity, it, uh, hard, uh, harder, stronger uh, thermal spray coatings. And, and this is, for, uh, thermal spray applications are just, you know, maybe more than that, but this is the most used uh, uh, applications in the industry in the world. Tolga, we're, we're running on time here for this episode. So what I'm thinking is I know that you wanted to go into uh, the ins quality control and inspection of thermal spray coatings. I think let's, let's do that for the next episode and go through that so that we can uh, unpack that more and provide a little bit more detail regarding the quality control, uh, both in the shop and the field uh, with thermal spray and then also the inspection of thermal spray coatings. Um, in, in closing out this episode uh, or this week's episode, is there anything that you wanted to um, offer as a final thought regarding thermal spray coatings and application process? Um, James, as I told you, thermal spray is unlike other coatings. And there, there are numerous ones. Just we have, we have shown five of them. But uh, in five of them also there are a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of, uh, just like, wait, wait a minute, uh, different. So, but, but I can say that we can, we think in generalities, but we live in detail. What I mean by that, so we will do, go on into inspection and, uh, in the next episode, but there are a lot of parameters that we haven't covered. And the, the parameters we have covered have also much more details. So therefore, we should think of that we are g just going the generalities, but be sure that people uh, must uh, understand that we there are a lot of details, engineering details uh, in this thermal spray technology. Perfect, perfect. Uh, and Tolga had mentioned a couple uh, uh, reports, uh, one being from a KTA. Uh, what we'll do is we'll provide those links in the video description below uh, in the, the click to, uh, to receive that or take a look at those reports. Um, Tolga, I appreciate this opportunity for this Thursday to have a really great discussion, and I look forward to continue this thing uh, regarding thermal spray uh, quality control and also the inspection. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, too. So uh, anyone who are, wants to uh, ask questions about thermal sprays, uh, any technical question, uh, you are welcome to uh, ask me. And you can ask me via using uh, my uh, social media accounts or with this email address. Thank you very much. Perfect. And I'll make sure I put that also in the description as well. Okay, Tolga, thank you for this Thursday. Appreciate it. You're welcome, James. Bye. Goodbye.